So the video they have for Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the video that I have for you guys today is actually a very exciting one. It's a case update on a case that I covered back in October of last year. I did a series on the Long Island serial killer where we discussed in depth the victims, the investigation, as well as an entire video on the suspects in this case. If you have not watched that series, please make sure you go ahead and check that out. The first video in the series outlines the case and the victims. So if you do choose to watch either video in the series, just watch that first one. If you do want to know about the other suspects in the case, watch the second one as well. But for in-depth information and information about the victims and everything that happened, make sure you go ahead and watch that first video. As a reminder, in this case, there are at least 10 murders that took place in and around Long Island, spanning from the 1980s into the 2010s. The investigation really started when a woman named Shannon Gilbert was murdered. She was a sex worker who was meeting up with a client through a Craigslist ad before she seemed to have run off and subsequently went missing on Gilgo Beach on May 1st, 2010. In the search for Shannon, police ended up finding four more bodies on Gilgo Beach, which included the four women that were dubbed as the Gilgo Four. They were all found in burlap, buried on the beach in a methodical way, in line about 500 feet from one another. The bodies were sent off for autopsies, and it was found that all four women had died of strangulation. These four women included 25-year-old Maureen Bernard Barnes, 24-year-old Melissa Bartholomew, 22-year-old Megan Waterman, and 27-year-old Amber Costillo. Each of these women had worked as sex workers. They too posted their ads on Craigslist and each charged similar amounts for their services. Once again, to find out more about the lives of each woman, which I do suggest you do, watch the video that I made on this case originally. Other victims that are thought to be connected to the Long Island serial killer include 20-year-old Jessica Taylor and Valerie Mack, who were both found in Manorville. Then there are other unidentified victims thought to be connected. There was the body of an unidentified Asian biological male who they found to have maybe been transgender. They also found the body of an unidentified baby girl. There are also other remains found back in 1997 belonging to an unidentified black woman between the ages of 20 and 30 with a distinctive peach tattoo, so she was referred to as Peaches and it's thought that she was the mother of the baby girl that was found on Gilgo Beach. Then there are other unidentified human remains found back in 1996 who was connected to the remains found in April of 2011 who is identified as Jane Doe number 7. It's not confirmed but these bodies are thought to be connected to the Long Island serial killer but we aren't certain. For over a decade the identity of the Long Island serial killer has been a mystery but just a few days ago we found out that there has been someone arrested in connection with the Long Island serial killer case, and this man is not one of the suspects that we discussed in that video. So let's talk about him. 59-year-old Rex Hewerman is from Massapeka, Long Island, and he is currently being charged with three counts of first-degree murder and three counts of second-degree murder for the murders of Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Castillo. He is also being named as a prime suspect in the murder of Maureen Bernade Barnes. So the four bodies found lying next to one another on Gilgo Beach. Rex, did you do it? According to court documents, police revamped their investigation into these killings in January of 2022. They did a comprehensive review of every item of evidence that they had found previously. These documents state that their review of the evidence led them to a first-generation Chevrolet Avalanche that was registered to Rex Hewerman at the time of the murders. It turned out that a witness actually saw the man that had hired Amber for sex work and the description matched Rex 
And then it showed that she had been picked up by this man who was driving a Chevrolet Avalanche on the day that she was murdered. So obviously they couldn't identify the man at the time, but the car that she was picked up in and the description of the man who was picking her up both matched to Rex. In addition to this, they found cell phone bills that showed that Rex was using burner cell phones to arrange meetups with the four victims. Then, as we discussed in the last video, after Melissa went missing, someone called her family and harassed them for weeks and taunted them. There were a total of seven phone calls made to Melissa's sister, Amanda. In the calls, the man asked her if she was a whore, like her sister. He said, I'm watching your sister rot and disgusting, despicable things like that. Police found that Rex's personal cell phone, which was a different cell phone than the burner phones, but his personal cell phone was in the same area at the same time that someone was making these taunting phone calls from a burner phone. They were able to use his location data to see that his locations from his personal cell phone matched the locations of the person using the burner cell phones to call each victim to contact them for sex work purposes. Then his location was tracked down to Midtown Manhattan, which is where they tracked those taunting cell phones to be from around the same time that the taunting phone calls were made. Now, Rex is married to a woman named Asa, and we'll talk a little bit more about her in just a few minutes, but police were able to find that from July 8th, 2009 until July 18th, 2009, Asa was out of town and was in Iceland, which is where she's from, during that time. Melissa Bartholomew went missing on July 12th, 2009. So it matches up with when his wife was out of town. Then his wife was out of town again, this time to New Jersey, and she was gone from August 28th, 2010 until September 5th, 2010. Amber Castillo went missing on September 2nd, 2010. So again, while his wife was gone. Then police found several online accounts that belonged to different junk emails that were associated with the burner phones that Rex had been using at the locations that matched his personal cell phone. On one of those junk emails, police found thousands of Google searches related to sex workers, torture-related porn, and child images. These searches included the following, and just as a warning, they're disgusting. They're really gross. They made my stomach hurt to read. I didn't include all of them. I left out some of the ones that I simply just do not want to say. They're all really disturbing, really disgusting. The affidavit outlines a lot more of the searches that he made, if you want to know every single search, but the ones that I tell you, you'll kind of see, like, how disturbed this man truly is. So the Google searches that were made through his junk emails include the following, Mistress Long Island, Mature Escorts Manhattan, Girl Begging for Rape Porn, Teen Begging for Rape Porn, Pretty Girl with Bruised Face, Torture Redhead Porn, 10-Year-Old School Girl, Girl Hogtied Torture Porn, 10-Year-Old Blonde Hair Girl, Chubby 10-Year-Old Girl, Black Girl 10 Years Old, Girl with Face Beat Up, chubby 10-year-old girl crying. Then this same email was used to conduct over 200 searches between March of 2022 and June of 2023, all related to serial killers and the murders of Maureen, Melissa, Megan, and Amber. These searches include the following. Why could law enforcement not trace the calls made by the Long Island serial killer? Why hasn't the Long Island serial killer been caught? Long Island serial killer, Megan Waterman, Melissa Bartholomew, Maureen Bornade Barnes, redacted, name of relative of Melissa, redacted, name of relative of Megan, cops launch Gilgal Beach Homicide Investigation Task Force, mapping the Long Island murder victims, inside the Long Island serial killer and Gilgal Beach, the Long Island serial killer, criminal minds, in the Long Island serial killer investigation, new phone technology may be key to break in case. Then it showed that he watched a bunch of different documentaries, listened to podcasts, watched different videos related to the Long Island serial killer. But either way, on other email accounts associated with him using those burner phones, police found selfies that Rex took and sent to other people to arrange for sexual activity and hiring sex workers. This obviously confirmed that he was the one using these burner phones. 
He was also seen on surveillance video at a phone store purchasing minutes for a cell phone that was used to access the emails associated with him. Then police found some DNA evidence that connects Rex to each of the three victims. Now, Maureen was found to have been restrained by three leather belts, one of which was used to bind her feet, legs, and ankles together. There was one strand of female hair found on that belt. Then, Megan was found to have been bound with duct tape, and there were two female hairs found on that duct tape. Amber also had duct tape on her, and there was one strand of female hair on Amber as well. Police said that these hairs weren't suitable for DNA testing initially, but have since been able to submit the hairs for DNA testing. So, police collected 11 bottles from the trash outside of Rex's house, which were then used to conduct this DNA testing, and based on that testing, they believe that the hair found on those three women belong to Rex's wife. Then, as I stated before, all of the victims within the Gilgo Four were found wrapped in burlap on that beach. Within the burlap that Megan Waterman was in, there was a male hair found at the bottom. Police sent that hair off for DNA testing as well. During this time, police were already surveilling Rex and they collected a pizza box that they saw Rex discard in a public trash can and used that to compare to the hair. They found that the DNA on the pizza was a match to the hair that they found on Megan and it belonged to Rex. So finally, based on all of this evidence, Rex Hewerman was arrested on July 13th, 2023. When they searched him at the time of his arrest, they actually found that one of the burner phones associated with his junk email, it was on his person. So I guess he had this same burner phone and was carrying it around for 10 years. So after the arrest, those who lived around Rex and who knew him were all shocked. The whole community knew the 59-year-old architect as a quiet, normal businessman who loved his family. Rex grew up in Massapequa Park, directly across the way from Gilgo Beach. He had a brother named Craig, and in adulthood, he purchased the home that he had grown up in and stayed there. So basically, he just stayed in the same home his entire life. He went to St. Peter's High School, then went on to Montclair State College, where he got a degree in business administration. In 1994, he started his architecture company called RH Architecture Design, located in Midtown Manhattan. He had a wife of 22 years, as I stated before, 59-year-old Asa, and together they had two children. His daughter is 26 years old, and her name is Victoria. She worked as an employee on her father's team at RH Architecture, and according to neighbors, his son had special needs, so I don't know the exact nature of his disability, but neighbors described him as a nice kid overall. People describe the family as your average, typical family. They're quiet, but no one ever expected that Rex could be involved in anything like this. Members assigned to the Gilgo Beach Task Force, which consisted of numerous detectives and investigators from the Suffolk County Police Department, as well as our partners in the FBI, uh, did place one individual under arrest. Neighbors woke up to an unimaginable revelation. The decade-long hunt for a serial killer is somehow centered here in Massapequa Park. Suffolk and Nassau police and state troopers descended on this modest house on First Avenue. It's a shocker. I mean, it's a real eye-opener. It's crazy. It's mind-blowing. It's, you know, quiet mass people park. Those living next door to Hewerman say he grew up in the house and remained with a wife to raise children, working as an architect. We spoke frequently, every day, and, and his kid is a nice kid. He's, he's a special needs kid, and the guy's been quiet, never really bothers anybody. Um, you we're kind of shocked. He grew up here with his parents and his brother. Neighbors say he did woodwork. A large cooler was removed from the house. Many here describe as dilapidated. Every time we walk past the house, you'd say, why aren't they fixing this house up? It's the only one in the neighborhood that looks like that. And uh, no, there was never any answer. For a while, no. Um, only recently, um, I, you know, I want to give a shout out to Rodney Harrison, the police commissioner. I think he's really doing a great job taking it seriously. We have never stopped working on this case. There are uh, police officers, Suffolk police officers, who started working on this case, who have retired now. 
Uh, but their efforts, their dedication, it has never stopped. Other than that, we don't know a ton more about Rex's family or home life. In addition to this obvious secret disgusting sexual deviancy, Rex had a little bit of a record. Between 2010 and 2021, he owed over $425,000 for taxes that he had failed to pay, but I guess he was working over the years to pay it back. Then between him and his wife, they owe an additional $81,500 to New York State in personal income tax. He was also involved in, I believe, four lawsuits in New York against drivers who he said hit him with their cars, causing him serious and permanent personal injuries. Three of these cases were settled or discontinued while one is ongoing. Other than that, he doesn't have any other criminal history that we know of, no other violence, nothing else in his past that can really explain or make sense of why he did the other things that he's accused of doing. So that is what we know about the suspect in the Long Island serial killer case so far. I think a lot of this evidence is really damning and I just hope that they continue to find more so we can find out if he is connected to any of those seven other victims. I'm so happy that we're finally seeing this kind of movement in the case. I'm so happy that I covered the case when I did because it's just so cool to know that all of these developments were starting to be discovered behind the scenes as we discussed this case. As with any other case updates, as more information comes out, you guys will be the first to know. I will keep you updated as I find out more, but that is all I have for today's video. I know it was a short one, but it was really just a recap and update on the new information that we have. And again, as more comes out, I will let you guys all know. But now I want to know what you all think. Do you think that this is a Long Island serial killer? Do you think that he is connected to any of the other victims? Do you think that we'll have even more evidence? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you go ahead and check out my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and fill out the Google form that's listed down below as well. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.